Aardvark is the last surviving member of an odd and primitive order of ungulates and might have survived by evolving away from hooves and developing powerful claws. Amazingly its closest living relative are the elephants. They share few anatomical features with other Afrotherians but many are partly African in their distribution, this probably reflects the fact that Africa was an island through the early Cenozoic. Elephant shrews are another unexpected member of Afrotherians, closer to elephants than shrews. Once believed to belong to Insectivora, this classification is now considered to be polyphyletic and obsolete. This is based on molecular studies that show similarities with primitive ungulates. Other Afrotheracida like golden moles are a good example of evolutionary convergence with the true moles. They share the same behavior and aspect but they are not related, they possess a cloaca and males lack a scrotum. Some species do not need water at all. Tenrex are another result of convergent evolution with the hedgehogs but they have a low body temperature, sufficiently so that they do not require a scrotum to cool their sperm as do most other mammals. In the past, hyraxes were more diverse and widespread, they were the primary terrestrial herbivores in Africa, just as odd-toed ungulates were in North America. During the Miocene, however, competition from the newly developed bovids, which were very efficient grazers and browsers, displaced the hyraxes into marginal niches. The descendants of the giant hyracoids evolved in different ways. Some became smaller, and evolved to become the modern hyrax family. Others appear to have taken to the water, ultimately giving rise to the elephant family. Well, I think you may have guessed Tarsinoirium is another result of convergent evolution with modern rhinoceros with its pair of enormous horns above the nose, but its limbs were columnar, similar to those of elephants, the hips were also elephant-like. It lived in tropical rainforests and at the margin of mangrove swamps. The Desmostylia, with Sarnia and Proboscidea, have traditionally been assigned to Tethyria, a group named after the Paleo-Ocean Tethys around which they originally evolved. Their dental and skeletal forms suggest that Desmostylians were aquatic herbivores dependent on littoral habitats. Analysis their bone structure has revealed them to be fully aquatic, like Sarnians and Cetaceans, with their limbs being incapable of supporting their own weight on land. However, they are thought to have been outcompeted ecologically by Sirenians. Studies on Dismostlas show that the former preferred areas shallower than 30 meters, while Paleoparadoxia occurred in offshore waters. Proerostomus is the earliest Sirenian discovered. It was a hippopotamus-like amphibious creature with a terrestrial lifestyle predominance. Judging from its crown-shaped molars and the shape of its snout, it fed on soft plants. Pazicerin is another basal Sirenian and is an example of a transitional form between land and sea mammals. The Jamaica's submersion during the late Eocene might be the origin of the Sirenians and the rest of the accompanying fossil fauna consists mainly of aquatic vertebrates. The teeth of Eotheroids were relatively unspecialized compared to those of extant Sirenians, which are reduced as an adaptation for feeding on sea grass. It was related with the modern dugongs, such as the extinct Stolas sea cow. It was the biggest Sirenian and was really slow moving, unfortunately. Description of this animal became all of the news, then a lot of different sailors and hunters showed up to take advantage of this animal, hunted them to extinction. 
Dugongs graze on underwater grasses day and night, rooting for them with their bristled, sensitive snouts and chomping them with their rough lips. These mammals can stay underwater for six minutes before surfacing and they spend much of their time alone or in pairs. Their population is decreasing rapidly. Manatees spend approximately 50% of the day sleeping submerged, surfacing for air regularly at intervals of less than 20 minutes. Manatees are capable of understanding discrimination tasks and show signs of complex associative learning and they also have good long-term memory. The main causes of death for manatees are human-related issues, such as habitat destruction and human objects. Merriam did not have an elephant-like trunk, it may have had a broad flexible upper lip like it tapers for grasping aquatic vegetation. It is not thought to be directly ancestral to modern elephants, it was a branch of proboscidea that died out, leaving no descendants. The most basal proboscidean may have been the earlier Phosphorium that lived during the late Paleocene. The shape of its head is composed of attributes of a snout, more vividly, turning into a mouth with a rounded jawline. Similar mammals in its order attained a more snout-like nose, which was also a factor that pertained to it having a semi-aquatic lifestyle. But the first large size proboscidean was Baritherium, it weighed about 2 tons and its fossils were characterized by a strong sexual dimorphism. Deinotherium is in another evolutionary side branch that went extinct, the way it used its curious tusks has been much debated. It may have rooted in soil for underground plant parts like roots and tubers, pulled down branches to snap them and reach leaves or stripped soft bark from tree trunks. Paleomastodon, with Phyomia, are believed to be direct ancestors of elephants and mastodons, the lower tusks were flat rather than pointed cones, and were probably used to scoop plants from swampy water. The tusks in the upper jaw of the Phyomia may have been used in defense or scraping bark off trees. Based on the characteristics of mastodon bone sites, it can be inferred that the mastodon social group consisted of adult females and young, living in bonded groups called mixed herds. The males abandoned the mixed herds once reaching sexual maturity and lived either alone or in male bond groupings. The most striking attribute of Embelodon is its lower tusks, which are narrow elongated and distinctly flattened. There has long been an assumption that these lower tusks were actually used as shovels by the animal during feeding, presumably to dig up water plants. Where patterns on the teeth of Platybolodon suggest that it used its lower tusks to strip bark from trees, and may have used the sharp incisors that formed the edge of the shovel more like a modern-day scythe. Gomphotheres differed from elephants in their tooth structure, particularly the chewing surfaces on the molar teeth. Cuvironius would have superficially resembled modern elephants with spiral-shaped tusks. These animals were widespread in North America, colonized the continent by Birinia. The dietary evolution may have been one of the factors that contributed to the disappearance of American gomphotheres at the end of the Pleistocene. Climatic change and human predation have also been discussed as possible causes of the extinction. Unlike modern elephants, 
the upper tusks of Gomphotherium were covered by a layer of enamel. It probably lived in swamps or near lakes, using their tusks to dig or scrape up aquatic vegetation. Ananchus already has a more modern elephant body form, particularly with its shorter neck. The legs of Ananchus however were still proportionately shorter than they were in modern forms, it was specialized in feeding upon plants that were beyond the capability of herbivores. In the past, stegodonts were believed to be the ancestors of the true elephants and mammoths, but it is currently believed that they have no modern descendants. They were likely good swimmers, as their fossils are frequently encountered on Asian islands, all locations not connected by land bridges with the Asian continent even during periods of low sea level. A general evolutionary trend in large mammals on islands is island dwarfing. Stegodon florensis is an extinct species of stegodon endemic to the island of Flores and an example of insular dwarfism. It is also believed that dwarf stegodons were the main prey of the still extant Komodo dragon before modern humans introduced their modern main prey in its range Rusa deer and water buffalo. Proboscideans experienced several evolutionary trends, such as an increase in size. As with other megaherbivores, including the extinct sauropod dinosaurs, the large size of elephants likely developed to allow them to survive on vegetation with low nutritional value. Their limbs grew longer and the feet shorter and broader. The African bush elephant developed a highly intelligence and have a very large convoluted neocortex, a trait they share with humans. The elephant's brain is similar to that of humans in terms of structure and complexity. For example, the elephant's cortex has as many neurons as that of a human brain. African forest elephant is the smallest of the three extant species of elephant. A unique aspect of the forest elephant's ecology is the appeal they have to clearings in the forest, known as Bayai by Central Africans, where they seek minerals and social interactions. The Pleistocene saw the arrival of Paleolexodon nomadicus one of the largest terrestrial mammal of all time. It has been claimed that a Paleolexodon population of undetermined species survived in northern China until 3,000 years ago, these elephants are more likely Asian elephants. Mammoths stem from an ancestral species called African mammoth. These mammoths lived in northern Africa and disappeared about 3 or 4 million years ago. Descendants of these mammoths, southern mammoth, moved north and eventually covered most of Eurasia. In turn, this species was replaced by the steppe mammoth which evolved in northern Asia. Some mammoth became small due to insular dwarfism, like the pygmy mammoth. Land bridges were once theorized to have connected the northern Channel Islands to the mainland, because it was assumed the mammoths could not swim. But the most well known is the woolly mammoth, as massive as they were, it figured on the lunch menu of early humans, who coveted these beasts for their warm pelts as well as their tasty meat. In fact, the patience and cooperation required to bring down this animal was the key factor in the development of human civilization. Now, its closest living relatives, Asian elephant, is an endangered species. Most of them are in captivity, kept in confining areas and used for human activities.